Welcome to Big Papa Rob's Podcast Story Rewind. I'm Big Papa Rob. Here I rewind the story of a person, place, or thing and tell you where it originated from. This story is about a person who had 149 hit singles on the Billboard Hot 100, but never learned to read music. One other thing about this person, they had a 7th degree black belt in karate. Stick around and find out who I'm talking about today. Let's rewind this story to its earliest beginnings. This person was born in Tupelo, Mississippi on January 8, 1935. They were supposed to have a twin, but their twin was stillborn. Their parents was working class and didn't have much money. The father worked with his brother as a farmer raising cotton, soybeans, and hogs. Growing up, this person also attended the Assembly of God Church which had a very positive impact on him. At just 10 years old, this person won fifth place and $5 in fair ride tickets in a talent show at the Mississippi-Alabama State Fair by singing Old Shep. Even though they wanted to bike for their birthday, this person's mother gave this person their first guitar for their 11th birthday. In 1948, the family packed up all their belongings in a 1939 Plymouth and moved to Memphis, Tennessee to see a better economy. When they reached Memphis, they lived in public housing in North Memphis. Life continued to be hard for the family. In addition to attending Hums High School, this person worked various jobs to help support the family as well. While practicing and learning guitar, this person was heavily influenced by black blues and gospel music. During a high school talent show, this person nervously sang with his guitar and won. I found an interesting fact about this person that they failed music in high school despite all the music talent they had. As soon as this person graduates from high school in 1953, they're hired by a machinist shop right after graduation. With a real job and money to spare, they decided to record an acetate record for their mother's birthday that would cost about $4. This person went to the recording studio of Sun Label. Sam Phillips, the person who recorded this person, instructed his assistant to write down this person's information. This person was noted by the assistant as being a good ballad singer and hold. As a result, this person made several acetate demos at Sun Studios after getting the recording book. In 1954, this person changes jobs and goes to work for the Crown Electric Company doing various jobs such as driving a delivery truck and delivering supplies to job sites. This person decides to take night school classes to become an apprentice electrician. Later that year, Sam Phillips at Sun Studio calls this person into the studio to sing a song he was hoping to record. But at the time, Sam wasn't satisfied with how this person sang the song. This person went through several songs to show him his style of music, so Sam decided to team him up, this person up with some local musicians based on the songs. On January 5, 1954, this person and the musicians went back to the studio to record five singles for the Sun label. Through the summer of 1954, this person and the two musicians started playing small clubs throughout the South. On October 2nd, 1954, this person made an appearance on the Grand Ole Opry, but this didn't go well. Opry officials reportedly advised this individual to return to driving trucks. He was extremely disappointed by this. It was fortunate for us that this person didn't let this deter them from recording and traveling. As of mid-October, they had quit their day jobs to pursue the music full-time. 
They appeared on the Louisiana Hayride, a live Saturday night country music radio show, for the first time on October 6, 1954. Grand Ole Opry's chief competitor was this show. This person succeeds and signs a one-year contract for 52 Saturday night appearances, making this their big break. I think it'll be easier for me to tell this story if I share who I'm talking about. If you haven't already guessed, I'm talking about the king of rock and roll, Elvis Aaron Presley. In 1955, Elvis met Colonel Tom Parker, a promoter and manager connected with various acts. Elvis and his musicians, Scotty Moore and Bill Black, continued touring on their own and in package shows with various country stars, including artists from the Hayride. During this time, drummer DJ Fontana joins Elvis's band. Elvis's popularity is really growing as summer approaches and his sexy moves and good looks are driving the young girls wild at his live shows. Elvis signed a management contract with Hank Snow Attractions in August of 1955. This allowed Colonel Parker to now become Elvis's exclusive manager. November 1955, Elvis signs his first contract with RCA Records. Colonel Parker negotiated the sale of Elvis's son contract to RCA which included the five singles and other unreleased material. The price was an unprecedented $35,000 plus $5,000 bonus. In today's dollars, that would be about $400,000 and about $60,000 bonus. In January 1956, after his 21st birthday, RCA held the first of many recording sessions, which included the hit Heartbreak Hotel. After three weeks on the market, this sold 300,000 copies. Additionally, the song topped the pop singles chart for eight weeks, the country chart for one week, and the R&B chart for five weeks. With this single, Elvis sold over one million copies and earned his first gold record. The first time Elvis appeared on television was on January 28, 1956, on a show called Stage Show. During the weeks to follow, he appeared five more times, making minor waves across the country. His first album, entitled Elvis Presley, was released by RCA in March of 1956. His first gold album award was earned when his album reached over one million in sales and ranked number one on the Billboard Pop Album Chart for ten weeks. Elvis' second appearance on the Milton Berle Show was one of the most controversial performances. With his sensuous moves, he performs Hound Dog and drove the kids wild in the audience. He also disgusted the press and some of the adults watching. As a result, his popularity seemed to be unstoppable. The morale of Lee concerned establishments and religious community condemned his sexy moves and black influence sound, but the young people loved it. Ed Sullivan had said he would never have the likes of Elvis Presley on his show. You should be careful what you say you would never do. With Elvis's popularity and high ratings on other shows, Ed Sullivan changed his mind and made a three-appearance deal paying him $50,000, the highest amount ever paid to a performer at the time. By August 1956, Elvis begins shooting his first movie, Love Me Tender. Fun fact. The movie was originally called Reno Brothers. The name was changed before it was released in order to capitalize on the sure-to-be-hit song on the soundtrack. September 1956, Elvis Presley Day was pronounced in Tupelo, Mississippi. He and his parents returned to the town of his birth as a star. He performed two shows at the Mississippi-Alabama State Fair, where he had also performed when he was 10. Fans were controlled this time by a hundred National Guardsmen surrounding the stage. By the end of 1956, Elvis merchandise that had only been sold since September had already ranked in 22 million in sales. With five number one pop singles, two number one albums, and his first movie, 1956 was Elvis Mania. In March of 1957, Elvis purchased Graceland Mansion for himself, his parents, and his paternal grandmother for $102,500. He 
Here's something you may not know. It wasn't until June 26 of 1957 that Elvis spent his first night at Graceland. Elvis performs his first concert outside of the United States in April of 1957 in Canada, performing two shows in Toronto. In December of 1957, Elvis celebrated his first Christmas at Graceland. Additionally, he received his draft notice. The Army airs began March 24, 1958 for Elvis. He was inducted into the U.S. Army at the Memphis Draft Board. Elvis served his basic training at Fort Hood, Texas. After basic training, Elvis record, had a recording session while on his first leave. This was his last recording session until 1960. One of the songs recorded during this session was Big Hunk of Love. In 1958, Gladys Presley, Elvis Presley's mother, became ill and was transported by train back to Memphis to be hospitalized. After being granted emergency leave, Elvis arrived at his mother's side on August 12th. She passed away on August 14th at the age of 46. As of August 24th, Elvis reported back to Fort Hood. In October of 1958, Elvis was shipped over to Germany and stationed at Freiburg for 18 months. In Europe, he found fans as enthusiastic as those back in the U.S. Back home, Colonel Parker continued to promote and release hit records for Elvis. It was September 13, 1959, when Elvis met 14-year-old Priscilla Ann in Germany. Priscilla's stepfather was a captain in the Air Force stationed in Germany at the time. A friend of Priscilla's invited her to a party at Elvis's house. Another interesting note, while in the Army, Elvis began studying martial arts. He achieved his seventh degree black belt in March of 1973 under Master Kang Ri. The 5th of March, 1960, marked Elvis's official discharge from active duty, ending his career as a sergeant. One thing to note, no special privileges were granted to him during his service as a GI. A recording session was scheduled for March 20th for Elvis's first post-Army album, Elvis is Back. It reached number two on the Billboard Pop Charts. On March 26, Elvis taped a special Welcome Home Elvis edition of Frank Sinatra's ABC Variety Show, for which he was paid $125,000. 17-year-old Priscilla visits Elvis from Germany in June of 1962. It was the first time they had seen each other since Elvis left Germany almost two years ago. They spent the time together in Las Vegas. Something else I found interesting in my research. There was a riot in October of 1962 in Mexico due to the screening of his movie G.I. Blues, and the Mexican government banned Elvis movies as a result. The Christmas holidays of 1962 marked Priscilla's second visit to Elvis after they met in Germany. In December of 1966, Elvis formally proposes marriage to Priscilla and presents her with a wedding ring. Elvis and Priscilla were married in a private ceremony at the Aladdin Hotel in Las Vegas on May 1, 1967. The couple honeymooned in Palm Springs. Lisa Marie Presley was born on February 1, 1968, to Priscilla and Elvis Presley. Elvis records his first television special in June of 1968, commonly referred to as the 68 Special. It was by this time that Elvis had 28 films, 66 singles, and 9 studio albums to his credit. At this point, he no longer saw the success that he had once had and had become frustrated with the limitations on his creativity and artistic expression. As much as he had wanted to be a serious actor, Hollywood had other ideas and he went along with them. It had been more than seven years since he had appeared before an audience. He said he had missed the closeness of his audience as well as the energy and excitement of live performances. 
In the 68 special, he reunited with his original band members Scotty Moore and drummer DJ Fontana. Several of Elvis's friends and associates joined them for an informal jam session as part of the show. In front of a towering background of red lights spelling Elvis, he ended the show wearing his infamous white two-piece suit. If you recall, in Las Vegas' international hotel shows of the early 1970s, we started to see the iconic Elvis jumpsuits. On December 21, 1970, Elvis visited President Richard Nixon at the White House. The National Archives still receives the most requests for photos from that meeting. As of late 1971, Elvis and Priscilla had separated, and Priscilla had moved out onto her own with Lisa Marie. Elvis and Priscilla divorced on October 9, 1973. Priscilla was quoted saying, I did not divorce him because I didn't love him. He was the love of my life, but I had to find out about the world. Elvis' divorce was a result of numerous affairs and drug abuse. Elvis sang, I will always love you to Priscilla as they left the courthouse the day they received their divorce. Elvis met Ginger Adlin on November 19, 1976 who remained his steady girlfriend until his death in 1977. On June 26, 1977, Elvis performed his last concert at the Indianapolis Market Square Arena. After a late night visit to the dentist, Elvis returns to Graceland shortly after midnight on August 16, 1977. After taking care of last minute tour details, he relaxes with his family and staff Around 7 a.m., he goes to the master suite at Graceland to rest. At the age of 42, Elvis passed away due to heart failure by late morning. Afterwards, it was determined that his death was caused by prescription drug abuse. On the day of his death, more than 3,100 floral arrangements were ordered, setting a United States record. On August 18th, an estimated 18,000 people lined Elvis Presley Boulevard in Memphis to see his funeral progression with signs, flowers, and memorabilia. In the years leading up to Elvis's death, he toured and recorded constantly, selling out venues around the world and earning a third and final Grammy. Between 1956 and 1996, Elvis had 149 hit singles on Billboard Hot 100. A total of nine of his solo albums had reached number one in the U.S. charts. With 1,149 weeks spent on the U.K. singles chart, he had spent the most weeks on that chart in history. Let's not forget the movies. Elvis starred in 31 feature films and two concert documentaries. Today, Elvis holds the Genus Book of World Records for Best Solo Artist with 1 billion sales worldwide. In addition, he holds the record for the most number one album by a male artist. The record is nine. The Elvis Presley estate made $110 million in 2022, as reported by Forbes magazine. Elvis was the fourth highest paid dead celebrity in 2022. I found some other interesting records related to Elvis. Vic Beasley holds the longest career as an Elvis impersonator. According to Genesis World Records, Vic started performing as the King from 1955 to July of 2002. The largest gathering of Elvis impersonators occurred at Harris Cherokee Casino Resort July of 2014 with 895 impersonators. And finally, if you wondered where Hillbilly Cat came from in the title of this episode, this nickname was given to Elvis during his early years when he was blending country, rockabilly, and rhythm and blues influences in his music. It highlighted his ability to cross genres and appeal to the wide audience. I tell my stories in hopes that you'll gain a deeper understanding of historical origins of many things, 
in the lives of people. You may not know their stories. Once again, I'm Big Papa Rob, and this was an independent podcast called Story Rewind. Story Rewind is written, produced, and edited by Big Papa Rob. For a donation to help me cover operating costs, you can buy me a cup of coffee. You can find the link in my show notes or on my social media pages. Your support would be greatly appreciated. I would also appreciate a five-star rating if you listen to my podcast on Apple Podcasts. And finally, if you have a story idea, please contact me through social media. A link to my social media accounts is listed in the show notes. I would love to hear from you. Today's music was Powerful Stylish Stomp Rock by Mark July, which can be found on Pixabay. This was a Big Papa Rob podcast 2023.